Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to this, uh, I don't count, the fourth cycle of the Rubismo Cafe Talk. Uh, my name is Justin Casimir. I'm the project coordinator, and I will try to animate the session. Uh, so if you have questions, uh, please write them in the chat, uh, or raise your, ha your hand at the end of the presentation from, from George. Uh, if we can get the next uh, slide, I think. Uh, so, yes, as I said, the fourth uh, cycle, we started in November, uh, looking more at what's the future of rural areas, that was the, the theme. Then we, we went a bit more uh, technical presentation for entrepreneurs on funding, IPR, and we presented one of our tools in January. Uh, last month, we, we were focusing on sustainability and how you can include it to your business model. And this month in March, it all about collaboration. So you see we have three different sessions. Uh, the first one today will focus on clusters and how they create uh, shared value. Uh, the second one will focus on the business environment. Uh, that's a result from, from the project as well. And the last one will be on the cooperative's role in uh, promoting this uh, business model. Uh, just ask everybody to use their microphone. So I get a clear message. Uh, Belil, please. I cannot do as I'm talking. I'll fix it after. And uh, we also had, have a virtual study visit. We have been so far in Sweden, Germany, and Italy. And at the end of March, we will be going to France. So every Tuesday, uh, as I said, from 11. And then we have even further uh, study visits. April, May, and June, uh, a bit, you know, longer sessions, looking at different, uh, you know, moving Ireland, Poland, uh, Denmark, Spain, and France as well. So focusing on the three different sectors the project is uh, focusing on. Yeah. So we, no more word from me. Uh, I think George from Clube, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Justin. Um, so let's, our presentation is about, excuse me, there. Where are the rest of the slides? Okay. Um, something is going on very slowly, but no, okay, we got it under control. So, um, We'll present our research in the context of the Rubismo project about how clusters create shared value in rural areas. Now, um, together with me online are um, our colleagues and our uh, director, Yanis Fallas, and uh, our manager, Nikos Davos, who have much more practical experience than me and will be able to cover uh, your questions much better than I. So, Let's uh, quickly go over some of the key concepts here. For example, um, by investigating rural areas, we use the European Commission definition of areas outside urban clusters. Uh, rural areas are the majority of the EU's land area, but um, only have a, about a quarter of its population. They tend to have lower GDP per capita, so there is an urban rural divide, but you, but they have other advantages such as usually lower unemployment, especially in our countries here in the South. Uh, in short, rural areas face a number of challenges, um, some of which are noted here. So uh, the idea is that collaboration between businesses, but also between businesses and other important actors can um, address uh, these challenges. And he, this is where the shared value concept and clusters come into play. So what is shared value? Well, shared value is a concept developed by Porter and Kramer. Um, in their own words, it refers to policies and operating practices that enhance the competitiveness of a company while simultaneously advancing the economic and social conditions in the communities in which the company's company operates. So um, at a quick glance at this table that compares the older concept of corporate social responsibility to shared value. Now, social responsibility was mostly about um, 
companies trying to, let's uh, put it simply, trying to put up um, um, a nice fa face for the external uh, world, for, for the people to show a good profile, a positive one to mitigate the um, negative aspects and so on. So it is in response to external pressure and separate from profit maximization. In contrast to this, shared value is um, interlinked with the, the prosperity of the company. So the, the idea is that the prosperity of the company is linked to the prosperity of the communities around the company. So shared value is integral to competing and integral to profit maximization. Um, again, according to Porter and Kramer, there are three ways in which shared value is created. And these they briefly are reconceiving products and markets, redefining productivity in the value chain or enabling the development of local clusters. In, um, according to them, uh, these problems involving a social purpose represent a higher form of capitalism. Uh, this can enable so society to advance more rapidly while allowing <laughs> companies to grow even more in a virtuous cycle. Now, of course, um, we all know that it doesn't always work like that in practice, but the positive thing is that there are plenty of cases where it does work like that positively. Um, some of them are mentioned here. For example, Nestlé is building agricultural, technical, financial, and logistical infrastructure in its coffee producing regions in South America, for example. And this further supports efficiency and local production. Um, it gives a lot of benefits to local communities and at the same time increases the profits of companies. Um, another much smaller scale example is the Aviation Valley Cluster in Poland, which uh, convinced local authorities and institutions that uh, an investment in human capital is needed. So we have a, an investment in education in the area, which of course offers direct benefits to the communities, but also, um, make sure that the cluster obtains a highly skilled workforce and so on for its own use. Um, in general, clusters are very um, well suited to the whole concept of shared value. Um, they include several actors, they promote collaboration by definition, they, um, and the most successful ones include not only the private sector, but collaborations with other uh, local actors, such as trade associations, government agencies, NGOs, and so on. So as a part of our research in Rubismo project, we um, kind of investigated six different clusters pictured here um, all across Europe. Uh, we kind of expanded the research later to a few more, but this is still in progress. So I, I didn't include it here. One of these clusters is us, of course, to, to be honest, the cluster of bioeconomy and environment uh, of the region of Western Macedonia in Greece. Uh, in this case, created by a local champion based on European expertise and various members, and it supports the, the, the um, transition from coal, which is very crucial for, for this specific region. Uh, we have the Processum, a, a biorefinery cluster in the north of Sweden, which um, uh, again created um, when regional entrepreneurs and politicians came together to find new solutions to reduce over-reliance on a single value chain. We have the Agro Transylvania cluster formed by the Cluj County Council to address collaboration between actors along the agro-food value chain. Uh, CRPV, which is a cooperative company in Northern Italy operating in the development of research on crop production. We have the, the um, cluster food industry Brandenburg, which is a huge cluster consisting of many enterprises of all sizes. Um, and it enables collaboration between the region's traditionally strong food sector. And finally, the green biorefining cluster, which was created by the Aarhus University and the Incubator Agrobusiness Park to promote university industry cooperation in improving the biorefining process. So without, as I don't have the time to go into further detail, but you'll have the presentation available, we can see that briefly, according to the theory by Porter and Kramer, uh, there are various ways in which these clusters create shared value 
value for themselves as well as their communities. For example, in our case, Klube has been expanding. Um, uh, it, it kind of uh, helps the region's companies um, and uh, makes them aware about a lot of things. It promotes the region's decarbonization. And, def and uh, at the same time, it uh, brings um, uh, research funding and workplaces in the region. And in, in, in different ways, but equivalent ones, um, the other clusters also create a lot of benefits for their own local communities. For example, Processum disposes waste in a more sustainable manner and ensures sustainab sustainable energy for the region. Agro Transylvania increases the share of local products in the local market, and it provides high quality local products for in, in the local market. Um, and similarly, for the other clusters, CRPV provides high quality skilled training to local farmers and technicians as part of its operations. Uh, the food industry cluster, for example, provides strict ecological guidelines leading to environmental farming and many jobs and increased turnover for the region's businesses. And um, uh, finally, improved income for farmers and businesses. So uh, we kind of identified several good practices um, in terms of generating shared value in, in these uh, clusters. Uh, for example, in our case, we uh, alternatively involve several of our members in uh, different research activities to enhance their know-how and build a stronger collaboration. This is a huge benefit to the experience if you think that uh, if you bear in mind that we are um, uh, let's say lagging region by European standards, a mountainous region in, in uh, northwestern uh, uh, Greece. Um, and at the same time, this builds a stronger collaboration and helps the region's transition. Um, in Let's take another example. In, in um, CRPV, there's a the, the uh, network created the direct link between R&D institutions and producers reducing the gap between research and practice and therefore benefiting both. Um, in short, these particular cases, to be frank, um, they are very, they are by definition, very good examples of shared value because these are clusters operating in sectors which are in any case predisposed towards environmental and economic benefits for the communities. They operate more or less in um, the whole sustainability and bioeconomy um, spheres, let's say. So yes, by definition, this helps. And it, it also helps that these clusters were founded as a result of external initiatives in order to either boost local R&D uh, making the local economy more competitive, more sustainable, and at the same time um, meet the region's economic, social, and environmental goals. However, uh, I should also fairly point out that even though this initiative was um, in most cases top-down for such reasons, all of these examples of, of, of clusters have managed to acquire, let's say, a critical mass and initiative of their own, and they, they continue to grow and prosper. So even if the original initiative was external, um, the, the, the benefit to the economic activities of the clusters themselves is also quite clear. Um, in short, there is a very good match in these cases between the challenges and the features of rural areas where collaboration is a, an important solution, especially to overcome so, some difficulties such as the, the greater geographic distances or the most more difficult ter terrain and less developed infrastructure involved. Um, so rural areas match the concept of clusters which match the concept of shared value. And this is also an excellent match for 
these key sectors and the beneficial sectors of, of bioeconomy and the all sustainable um, uh, activities in which these clusters operate. So overall, it seems that the theory of shared value, its application and of our research shows that clusters have an extremely promising potential for the creation of shared value in the rural areas. We are also in the process of uh, publishing a research paper on this, so maybe at some point, hopefully in the near future, you will be able to get even more specific information about this whole study. And in ending, um, I should note, of course, that uh, uh, measuring shared value is complicated and challenging, uh, takes a long time, and there are difficulties in accessing specific concrete data. And it, it is very case dependent. So each enterprise or each initiative, each cluster creates shared value in its own way, and it's a bit difficult to um, find a specific set of measures. So the, there is currently no way to, to benchmark it specifically. So we relied on our research in, in mostly um, findings that kind of meet the theoretical definition developed by Porter and Kramer. Um, but it would be very interesting for future research to um, benchmark the whole process. So uh, this is it very briefly. And um, as I said, our director and our manager are here to answer the more practical questions as I mostly dealt with the theory. And I wanted to close by asking a question to, to the audience uh, based on what you have heard. Can you think of any examples of clusters or maybe even networks or enterprises from your own regions which are creating shared value, which are as a part of their own functioning and prosperity also benefiting their local communities? Mm -hmm.